Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Stride game engine. Now this one may sound familiar to you, or it may be completely new, and that's because this is a game engine that has been renamed. In fact, this is a game engine that has been renamed twice. First it was called Paradox. They renamed it from Paradox because frankly, so many things were called Paradox, and then they renamed it to Zenko. And it was called Zenko for a couple of releases. It was mostly open source at that point in time. This was a game engine made by Silicon Studio. They changed their licensing model on it a few times, but frankly, they never really went anywhere with it. And then they've kind of open sourced it since there's a foundation that handles its development and now it has been renamed to Stride. So this is basically uh, Zenko 4, if you want to look at it that way. And that's why we were talking about today. 4.0 was just released. Now, if you've never heard of Stride, it's a really interesting looking engine. We'll go over here and look at some of the features for it. Now, if you are um, a Linux or Mac user, unfortunately, it is also built heavily around Visual Studio. So you do have a Visual Studio 2017 or a 2019 requirement. So this is a Windows only project. But as you can see here, you've got really nice advanced graphics going on, uh, graphic compositing, you got nested prefabs, you got a nice clean sharp UI with a UI editing experience directly in. This is one of those things that a lot of game engines are actually lacking. So it's a nice feature there. We've got a scene editor, curve editor, sprite editor for 2D games, advanced graphic supports, and yes, that includes Vulkan for you Vulkan fans out there. PBR material graphics, light probes, direct decks 12, and Vulkan rendering. We've got particle effects, post effects, advanced shader language, um, C sharp scripting, and one of the cool things about this release is it's now also got C sharp.net core support. We'll get into that in a minute. Stream streaming. Uh, so if you've got large scenes, you can stream them in so you can kind of have large open worlds, for example. Physics support. We got uh, path navigation support in there, animation, multi-threading. Uh, you do have support for virtual reality, the major devices out there. Um, so it is a full fat game engine that is available open source under the MIT license. So that is the gist of Stride. Definitely an interesting project. And now we're going to jump in and take a look at some of the new stuff. So here we are in the Stride launcher. Now there's a couple of interesting things going on here. Now first off, Stride 4 has been released. You can find it up here in the installer. Now, if we head on back over to the Stride website, which coincidentally is stride3d.net, and we look at the blog, there hasn't been a blog update since May. So, okay, let's head on over to the communities and we'll look at the forum. And nothing about the launch. It's a little interesting that way. Uh, so I don't know why they're not on their own web presence uh, talking about the 4.0 release. That's kind of an unfortunate thing. And then kind of funny over here, we have the release notes available here. And this is where I'm going to show them to you because this link doesn't work. Uh, and I got no idea where that actually links to. So uh, this is what we've got, and this is what we're going to go with. So if you are on the Stride team, you need to do something on your communication side. There is an announcement if you head into the Stride Discord server. But do keep in mind, you do have a website. You do need to update it. Plus, this link doesn't work. I also got to tell you, when you are installing this version, get ready to smash your head against the wall. There's something wrong right now with Stride 4 and Visual Studio. So before you install this, go into Visual Studio 2019. Make sure sure that it has all updates installed. Go into 2017 if you also have it installed. Even if you are only installing for one of those two versions, make sure both of your Visual Studio installs are up to date. And even then, when you install your re release up here, if it starts to give you some grief, just make sure that if it's pops up a Visual Studio window, close that window right away, because otherwise you run into this scenario of having uh, two installers trying to install. You can only have one Windows installer going at a time, and it will make your life Hell. All right, so that is that a bit of a warning. So if you do run into some problems getting this guy up and going, uh, that is kind of the way things go. But here we go into the release notes for Stride. And the big things in the 4.0 release, we now have voxel cone tracing GI or global illumination. Um, so this is a way of lighting your scene. What, what GI basically allows you to do is have secondary light sources. So once a light is bounced off a surface, without GI, basically that light ends there. So if you look at the shadows it generates, they're really fake looking. But the reality is when you have a light in your room, let's say you have a white wall, a certain amount of that, that light is going to bounce off of that wall and light things that are there as well. So GI allows you to have those secondary bouncing. So we've got, there's a lot of customization options available for it. So we've got this uh, voxel cone volume, voxel volumes available there. You can see all the various different properties that are available for it. And the big thing I mentioned early on was .NET Core. So they're going to make it toward going towards .NET 5. If you haven't been following the Microsoft way of things. It, this is a little confusing, but basically they created the .NET framework. That is the libraries that C Sharp, F Sharp, VB.NET, if that still exists. All of those things run on top 
of .NET Framework. Well, the thing is, over time, we started getting things like other platforms and, uh, you know, Linux and uh, Mac and mobile, iOS, Android, etc. And we also had server projects. So over time, .NET was a thing. And then there was um, Xamarin, which was sort of an open source re-implementation of .NET. And then Microsoft sort of said, oh, wait, there are other platforms in the world. Maybe we should support these. So they've kind of moved to a more open source, world friendly view. So then they started creating .NET Core, which is a stripped down subset of .NET. Well, going forward in .NET 5, .NET Core is going to be .NET. So the .NET framework, like 4.6 or whatever the heck it's at right now, isn't going to be a thing anymore. We are going to have one .NET to rule them all. No more Xamarin, no more .NET Core, no more .NET. .NET Core is the future of .NET with .NET 5. So now you see you can have your scripts when you are working with uh, Xamarin, or sorry, um, Stride, uh, can either be .NET Standard 2.1 or .NET Core. Right now it's 3.1 version, but coming soon, we are, oh, here we go, yeah, 3.1. So coming soon, this is ultimately going to be to move towards a .NET 5 approach. But that is definitely nice to see that they've got support for the new versions of .NET. Uh, so the .NET framework can be considered uh, deprecated and will likely be removed in the future, likely in 4.1, to allow us to take full advantage of C Sharp 8 and the soon to come C Sharp 9. Uh, so that's one thing to be aware of. There's also GPU instancing. Uh, documentation isn't great on that one right now. And some updates to the, the graphics APIs behind the scenes. So big overhaul, the graphics API selection work in a more future-proof way. Uh, previously relied on custom runtime identifier being uh, set in the solution. This does not work well. It's completely orthogonal to the existing runtime identifier and sometimes not having good fallbacks. Uh, now on, use proper use uh, stride graphics API in the CS project file to specify the graphics API. Hope to expose this in the editor later. Took the opportunity to improve the state of the Vulkan renderer and automatic and automatized graphic unit tests currently running for Direct3D 11 and Vulkan. Still a work in progress, uh, expect this in future releases. So again, you do have Vulkan and Direct3D 11 rendering behind the scenes, and then a more forward-looking API is being developed on top to support multiple things. We have a number of C-sharp beginner tutorials that were published to their channel, not necessarily part of this upgrade, but the documentation is available out there. So that is the gist of what is in Stride 4. So first thing is we are now Stride, instead of Zenko, although interestingly enough, it installed into slash Zenko folder. So there's still going to be some legacy aspects of it. Uh, but we are now stride and we got .NET Core support, which is definitely nice. Going to be moving towards that .NET 5 in the future. And we've got the, the API being changed and we've got um, global illumination via voxel cones, all kind of very nice things. So here you are when you first fire up uh, stride and you're going to see here one of the really nice things that they've done is there are a ton of templates in here for learning various different things you got a top-down template for rpg style third person games first person games they also released a uh, gdc demo from 2017 or 2018 that is a pretty complete game i did a, a um, a video on it in the past, but that is a separate download, by the way. It's not included here because it's actually right, quite large. So you've got various different options available here. We're going to go ahead and make one of these um, these demos work. So go new project. I'm going to do the uh, Space Escape, kind of a, a forward going thing. That's what I did the title graphics from. Shows you how to go ahead and create something, but uh, no, we'll go ahead and we'll do the first person shooter. Simple demo. So Create it wherever you want it. Nice to see the Stride Projects is the new folder name here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and create that. And then I'll show you. So here are your various different platforms that are supported by Stride. UWP. UWP is... Um, Universal Windows platform. It's kind of a subset of Windows. This includes things like Xbox Live, uh, Windows Phone for the eight of you that still have it, and uh, Windows Desktop. So... It's a subset of Windows. If you want to run on Xbox, basically, that's why that one is relevant. Uh, that's not the same as the full-blown Xbox developer kit, but it is giving you a way of getting Xbox onto... Uh, you can create Xbox games as a hobbyist. But you see here, even though our tooling only runs on Windows... Uh, uh, Stride can support Linux, and then also we've got macOS, Android, and iOS, but you do need to have the proper tools installed. I'm going to stick to just Windows for this demonstration. Obviously, that's going to increase your file sizes a little bit as well. And... Um, I'll just let this go ahead and run. The other cool thing about Stride is it supports NuGet packages. NuGet is a package manager for um, developing on Windows platforms. It's like Git, but new. NuGet, uh, you get it. Uh, basically, it allows you to bring in 
bits and pieces. So you see here stride.engine, stride.graphic, stride.particles, etc. can all be pulled via NuGet. So you can actually use portions of the stride code or stride libraries without having to use all the rest of the stuff. And the deployment is supported via NuGet, which is definitely a nice way of doing things. All right, so here we are in the stride main inter uh, interface. It's still got a little bit of work to do on the queue here. It's a fairly simple project. So I'm just going to let this run in real time. And yep, there we go. So your straightforward uh, approach to things. I actually, one of the things that I really like about Stride is their user interface is really modern and clean. Okay, yeah, so it's still building. I'm gonna pause it while it finishes the building. It's only gonna be a second or two, but. By the way, if I didn't pause it, what you're seeing on screen here, there's a bunch of things that will kind of drop in as the effects and stuff are built. Uh, this is kind of a process that goes through. Unreal Engine does this. Uni does it. Godot do it. Basically, they're building all the shaders and all the things they need to do. The weird thing or, or the interesting thing with Stride slash Zenko's approach is they actually update the graphics on the screen as they're going. So if things look really broken while the importing process is happening, uh, just do be aware of that. All right, so back in a second. Okay, we seem to be loaded now. You will notice I do feel kind of like a rat in a cage here. You can navigate around, basically, uh, right mouse button to pan and orbit. I just caused something to go freaky. All right, so here we go. So we can pan around in the world. By the way, I was asked this, and it's a good point. I'm going to try to remember to do this in every single video I do going forward. I'm currently running this on an i7-7 CPU uh, with a GeForce 1080. Um, so that's the machine that you're seeing in action here. You can see around the level, um, pretty straightforward. This is an FPS demo. I think you spawn somewhere in here. So let's find the uh, the icon for it. So here is a, a world entity icon. Uh, that's just a box in the world. Okay, so you can see here, here's the player character, and you see it's built out of components. That is just the way of the world these days, as you can tell. I uh, want to add a new component. You can do so here, and you can see the various different components that are available. And there are actually a lot of them out of the box. You got animation, audio components, lights for the world, and I think that's where, yeah, so there is where our new guy is. I'm going to add a voxel volume to it so you can see. So this is the new voxel um, sort of global illumination system that's available right here. By the way, if you want to remove a component, you can just go ahead and get rid of it that way. So that was the new functionality that was added in here, the new, the new component of sorts. And we've got, again, a number of other components. Another thing that you can do here, let's go back here, as scripts. Your scripts can come in as, um, you can go ahead and create a new script and attach it this way. Oops, I missed attach it this way. So you can see here, we've got character controller, a player controller script is attached that way. And that's how they show up. But as you can see here, it's already added as a component. You can specify parameters or values that go to those scripts. And you'll notice down here in the solution explorer. So our player controller and player input are both scripts over here. We go here into the code. So there is the app behind it. And then the code here, here are all of our various different scripts. You're going to notice the code is kind of split into two pieces. You've got the game code over here, and you've got the um, the app to launch it. So 99% of your code is going to be in these scripts. So we can see here, uh, here is the code for handling the player's input. And you can uh, tightly integrate this into Visual Studio. You can also do your coding right here if you're uh, into that kind of pain. Uh, but it does have a Visual Studio plugin for making um, this code directly integrate. So you, you've got nice tight integration. As you see, here is the code approach. You can do asynchronous and synchronous scripts. Uh, and it's basically just a matter of implementing a bunch of um, callbacks. So you see here, we've got the update callback. Uh, we've got the, is that, okay, so we're only using the update callback in this particular script. You can also expose events out over here. So you'll notice if we go back into the main scene here and we pick the player character controller again, you can, you can specify values. So you saw all those keys that were handled. So you can specify those values and they'll be passed into your scripts. It gives you the ability to set things up so that your level editor can maintain and work with things. Um, your assets, your game assets are all available down here. It, again, the directory folder structure is over here. Uh, any of the assets you work with, you can get a, a decent and solid preview so you can see it in action right there. Um, the import process all shown here. You can have multiple materials on a, on an asset. Um, you can also see who uses an individual asset. So you can see that this asset, for example, is used in the main scene. It, it's pretty straightforward. Anything you want to instantiate, you can literally just drag and drop into the world like so. You want to bring in your own asset, you can do so like this. There are a number of different options. So for example, we want to bring in a model. We could just do, we could create a uh, capsule. We could create a prefab. Again, there is prefab support in here. Or of course, we can bring in our own 3D models in a number of different formats, including Collada and FBX. 
and OBJ and Blender and so on. So there's nice uh, 3D model support in here. It does a good job at bringing things in. Once things are instantiated, so you can see here, we just put this this guy in our world. Uh, we can just go ahead now. It's its components. So you can see it built the proper model component for us here. And then of course, every component will have a positioning in the world. So if we want to add something to this guy, so if we want to have it submit some um, sound off of it, for example, we could drop an audio thing here, make an audio emitter like so. And then we basically drop in uh, the sound file right here. So go ahead and add a sound file in. Um, so yeah, we'll call that boom. So new asset, and then we could drop an asset in from our sounds, assuming we have one available to it. I actually don't even know if we do, uh, but that's kind of how things work. Everything is component based. It's a pretty straightforward approach. And then the final thing you got over here is your, your world uh, views over there. The, the, the standard keyboard interface, right mouse button to navigate, uh, WASD keys to move around like so, and then you can shift to speed things up play your game, click up here. Again, everything is uh, available and in, in linked into Visual Studio. So for example, if I come here and I want to open this guy up, I can open it up in the IDE. Uh, okay, so there is an error there with my integration. That was one of the points that was really, really, really messy during the install. So hopefully that gets resolved. So again, when you are first installing this style, you can see here the Visual Studio plugins, they are available, but the process was sloppy as hell. So hopefully that does get fixed up soon. So anyways, that is just a quick look at Stride. I've covered Zenko a few times in the past. This is one of those engines. I think it's just... Um, super, super, super polished. Um, the user interface and the tools are some of the cleanest ones that are out there. It's just a matter of now it's a new group. Um, they're again, uh, a little bit smaller, a little bit more focused. They're no longer supported by Silicon Studios. They are on their own now. And a big part of what they've been doing lately is setting up the open source foundation, renaming it to Stride. And you can see we've got fundamental things that they've been doing. Things like moving towards .NET Core. Um, yeah, there we are. Here we are in the world. This is a first person demo, right? So obviously there is your gun in Z world uh, and your arms in Z world and the camera in Z world. Uh, so that is uh, it, Stride. It, it's got a heck of a lot of potential. Again, you've got uh, Direct3D12 and Vulkan renderers behind the scenes. You've got really good model importing stuff. You've got physics built in there. You've got animations built in there. You've got a nice clean core to work from. And this is now an open source free project. So uh, I have a lot of interest in where Stride Stride goes going forward. And this is again, the first version of Stride. So it'd be interesting to see where things ultimately go. I've been cheering for this since it was the Paradox Engine. I actually did a tutorial on it back when it was the Paradox Engine. And I'll probably do an upcoming tutorial series on Stride 4. It's amazing. We've got some real good contenders for, you know, C Sharp, uh, free game engines out there or C-sharp cheap game engines out there. So we've got so many kind of different options going on and Stride actually looks like it has a heck of a lot of potential. So I'd be interested to see where this ultimately goes. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the new name Stride. Also, if you do install it, let me know if, if you had such a frustrating experience on the installer. And then finally, highly recommend if you are on the Stride team, uh, you really need to, you need to put something here on the blog or here on your forums to say, hey, look, Stride 4 is out there because uh, people don't know otherwise and you got to get the word out and not everybody who's on Discord. So uh, my last closing note there, a little bit of feedback. Anyways, that's Stride, a uh, very exciting engine. I've got my eye on it. Hopefully it goes a long ways. And let me know if you're interested in a tutorial covering this one. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.